You're welcome back. Uh, it's time now to lift some uh, headlines off the press. And we're glad to be joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. Good morning and welcome to the program, Tunde. Okay, um, before he joins us to uh, talk to us, um, let's just uh, look at some of the headlines that are on the newspapers. Let's begin with the Nation newspaper. And as soon as Tunde joins us, we'll welcome him. The Nation newspaper is the first, and it leads with this story. Tinobu orders release of grains to 50 million farmers and others. The writer there, the there is that President directs review of 8,000 Naira cash transfer to poor households. That is uh, the biggest headlines there, uh, headline rather there. Market forces driving price of petrol, says Kiari. That's another one. And just below the NNPCL, uh, price of petrol will, group, will go up and down as prevailing situations dictates, which means there's a possibility it can get to 1,000 or 1,005. Now market forces the COSA. Uh, UK agency OK's Naira for trade financing. That's a, a smaller headline up there. And Senate House, Senate and House to probe NNPCL NDDC orders. Many allegations in focus. We also have uh, CBN access 2,698 BDCs. Heat wave threatens lives in US, Europe. NPA targets 500 billion Naira revenue. And, uh, okay, so we'll move from uh, the Nation newspaper to yet another paper, and that this time is the Punch, the Punch newspaper. Punch newspaper leads with NLC, TUC, Lambast, Tinubu as fuel hits 630 naira per litre, shun negotiations. The writers are... Labor kicks against 8,000 Naira palliative, says Tinubu deviated from making Nigeria better. NNPCL defends new pump price, filling stations shot, queues resurface in Abuja and Lagos. Smaller headlines are saying Tinubu backtracks, reviews proposed 8,000 Naira cash palliative. Sustain air attacks on terrorists, commander tells troops, and not central, southwest, ex-governors may replace Adamu or Missouri. Okay. Still on the punch, um, military threatening to demolish 5,000 houses, Ogun communities tell assembly, and troops kill to... Okay, we'll leave that out. Now, we'll go to the next um, newspaper, and the last one for today, uh, that is Nature News. Nature News newspaper... Uh, leads with Aquaibom government forms climate partnership with Atmosphere AG on Vale's fuel efficient cook stove. Okay. Then the smaller headlines there have it that uh, AFAN, that is A F A N, to feed 200 million Nigerians in uh, 2023 wet season farming. Environmental sustainability solution-oriented journalism is important in climate change reportage. That is according to Akoshile. And um, there is something on sports there as well. Uh, that is that um, Kanu affirms Finidi as a Nyimba coach amidst Romos. You know, we heard that Kanu was going to be the chairman and Finidi was going to be the coach. It was rumored for a long time. And then Kanu was confirmed to be the chairman. Now he has confirmed that Finidi George is going to be the coach. Well, those are the headlines. And like I said earlier, we've been joined by Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. I do hope that Tunde is standing by right now. Tunde, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, my brother. Okay. Hope you had a great night. Yes, I did have a great night and a trekking morning. <laughs> okay, so to the next, yeah, well, we thank God for life. Let's start with uh, the Nation newspaper. Um, 
let me begin with what is not actually the biggest headline on the, na the nation, but for me it's very big. The Senate House to probe NNPCL and DDC orders. And they say that um, many allegations in focus. We remember what happened when there was this probe of the NNDC, NDDC when the uh, Senate president, the current Senate president, was being asked a lot of questions. We remember the famous off your mic thing and all that. Now, Akwabio is the I, Senate I president. Do, I do. Yeah, Akwabio is now the Senate president, and they're talking about probing NNPCL and NDDC and others, and that they say uh, many allegations are in focus. <laughs> Let me hear your comments about the success or otherwise of this kind of probe that they are telling us. Well, uh, let me quickly say that um, part of the responsibilities of um, <clears throat> the Senate, the House of Rep, and the different houses of assembly is to make laws, perform uh, oversight functions, and all represent their different constituencies. Pro of uh, the executive arm of government, any branch of the executive arm of government is part of the oversight and the oversight function. So if the Senate has found issues that deserve to be proved, it could be said without mentioning what, that it is, it is within the limits of their powers. But like you yourself have rightly said, we have had series of probes in the past, and the classical one was the NDC probe, which um, left a very embarrassing situation, not just for the Senate, but the entire, but for the entire Nigerian people. We decided to such a level that the Senate that called for the probe had to start. Uh, switching off the microphone so as to shut off the Nigerian people from hearing what the response of the person they were dealing was saying. So if we have had series of probes, not just the NDTC, but NNPC, and so many other bodies in the past, and we haven't gotten any useful results from those probes, we begin to wonder what difference the new probe that is being proposed by the Senate will bring to the entire Nigerian people. I suspect this uh, proposed probe may just go the way of the other probes that we have had in the past. Waste of nation's resources, waste of nation's time, and then an exercise in futility. The question now is, why is it that whatever pros we have in this country has never yielded the necessary results? The answer is very, very simple. Those who are probing themselves usually will have their hands in the cookie jar. In the cookie jar. So if you have dipped your hand, into the cookie jar, in the, into the cookie jar, invariably what you are doing is exposing yourself or playing the game of the ostrich, burying your hands in the sand, forgetting that the rest of your body is totally exposed to the atmosphere. Sooner than later, it is be a delegated or a managed probe or a probe designed to end in the way all the other probes have ended in the past. Um, That's Senator, Senator Gospel Akwabio was there and, you know, it didn't yield anything when he was even on the hot seat. Now he's going to be the one probing who? Because even when he was contesting for the Senate presidency, he said he shouldn't be judged according to his performance in NDDC. He should be judged according to his performance in other things like being a governor of a quiet bomb state. So 
right that that tell, told us or that tells us even till now that his time in NDDC was really really not a good time and now they're talking about probing NDDC are they probing the new board or are they probing uh, boards before now the people who were at the hem of affairs before now or how will that probe even be who will be probing who I'm just concerned it's as if so it's some kind of palliative as well we, well but who am I to say okay uh, well like I said the probe will most likely not yield any positive results. Most I don't forget that these people are politicians and they are also sensitive to what is happening on the street. Sometimes when they feel that the Nigerian people are not happy with them, they will raise a storm in the teacup and prepare to find a solution to the storm that they have themselves intentionally raised. It is a rationally tactic that is never going to take us anywhere. We remember, like I said, series of troops have taken place in the past, and we didn't get anything in the world. I mean, and again, don't forget the character that is called the Apadio, I'm not too sure. He has come in the mood of a very fallen or a can fallen. It's uh, better we devote our attention to something that is more useful. Well, let's let's just cross our fingers. We know we know where we are there's a there's a way Nigerians think it is going to end. Let's see if it's, they're going to prove us wrong as Nigerians and say, hey, we've come to do better in everything. Well, there's another one. Market forces driving price of petrol, says Kiari. You remember that yesterday there was an outcry in Abuja and in so many other places. The fuel uh, was sold mm -hmm. at uh, 617. In fact, I got reports from Cross River State that some places they were selling for 700 naira per litre. And the only response to that by Mele Kiari was that market forces are driving this process. So, which means market forces will drive this process and we can get to a situation where we might buy fuel for 1,000 naira and there's nobody to blame but market forces. Let me hear your own... Uh, your own. I, I, I was, uh, for most of yesterday, I was on the street. And I, I moved around on public transportation. I heard what the people driving the yellow buses were saying. I also heard what the people who are driving the scooters, the motorcycles, the Okada were saying. I also saw queues in different parts of Lagos yesterday while I was commuting around. But the truth of the matter is that. Uh, I mean, Kiyari is right to say that it's a market forces that is at play. Because if he is no longer regulated, if he are no longer giving subsidy, people will likely be selling the market, uh, I mean, the petroleum products at the rate or based on the rate in which they bought it, based on the cost of importation, shipping, and based on the cost of the storage. And then based on the cost of transporting the products from different parts of the country to the other. So if you factor in all those issues, you will agree with Abraham and with Kiyari that the market forces is at play. But you now ask yourself, is it right to subject our people to the vagaries of the market forces with all the other challenges? that they are already facing in the area of food, in the area of housing, in the area of education, in the area of dilapidated infrastructure, these are these trans the, the roads, the air, and then the hospital. And you also ask, is there even any evil in providing financing, I mean, uh, in subsidizing the petroleum products? 
Will Nigeria be the first nation in the world to subsidize its petroleum product? The answer is no. So, we are in for all manners of things with regard to this subsidy removal. Why do I say that? So long as the products are left to the, are left to the gallery of the market forces, chances are that the price of petroleum products will never come down. And our experience also teaches us better. Any time the price goes up in Nigeria, it has never come down. Because the production, the distribution, the importation of most of these items are outside the control of not just the Nigerian government, but the Nigerian people as a whole. So, it's not impossible that before December, petroleum products might be selling at a price as high as 1,000 per litre in places like Sokoto, in places like Meduguri, in places like Port Harcourt, and then available in uh, the uh, state. This program of uh, subsidy removal has not been well thought out. Yes, I agree that the new president has met a very empty threshold and that he required to raise money from whatever sources or the other, he could get it. But in trying to raise money, he ought to have sat down, contemplate all the challenges that go to some of these sources of raising money critically before embarking on some of the decisions that he has embarked on. And uh, I would want to say the fixing of the refinery and then supporting the different businesses that are building new refineries to ensure a speedy complexion would have been a better way to go than just removing the subsidy before working out the cushioning effect that they have not begun to do. God save Nigeria. Really, God save Nigeria. My, my, my question is, is, is what they are calling market forces, really market forces, in a, in a situation where um, very few people, out of 200 million people in Nigeria, very few, as at now, we have Dangote and five other unnamed people that have had licenses to import fuel into the country. And it, is six people or even 10 people, are they enough to call market forces? We know what happened in the aviation industry, for instance, where prices were set by the aviation uh, companies and they said, if you have to travel from Lagos to Abuja, for instance, this is a fixed price. And people were complaining, you don't do that. Everybody ha is at liberty to set the prices, uh, the transport fare uh, from one point to the other as they will. But these people have an association. They can talk to each other and they just set a price. Will you call that really market forces? Because the people playing in that, in that sector are so few that they can always talk to themselves. Is that really market forces? Because no matter what they do, if they just want to up the price, they can do that. Because there's no competition, as it were. It's just a few of them. Do you really call that a fair market forces? Well, first and foremost, like I said, last week when we were doing this paper review, that it is wrong for the government to be giving licenses to anybody for that matter. Talk less of these five people you have mentioned to import petroleum products to the country. If you say you want the market forces to be determining prices and all that, then it should be a free entry and free exit. Whoever has the resources or the money to bring the petroleum products to the country has to be allowed to do so without giving licenses to anybody. That is when market forces can really begin to work the way it should uh, work. What they have simply done is to return to a licensing regime which has been in place uh, before the subsidy was removed. And that is totally uh, wrong. And then with regard to the question you asked again, why can't the five people 
who have been given licenses to be bringing in these products decide among themselves to crash the prices or to cap the prices mm. so that uh, the products can be sold at a very cheap rate to the Nigerian people. Unfortunately, capitalism doesn't work the way you said it. Capitalism tries on the profit. Mm. Do more profit. Businessmen are not uh, uh, pastors or imams who think about morality, who think about ethics, who thinks about uh, what should be comfortable for the Nigerian people to do. Unfortunately, too, the government cannot force them to sell at any price because if you are giving them a license, the licenses are not given in most likely not be given free of charge. They will be paying some money to obtain those prizes. There will be also some things they have to comply with before they can bring the, 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 the product. So if there are all these um, challenges and not to, that they have to face, and for them more and more importantly, they will be buying the products at an international market uh, uh, price or rate from where they are buying it. The people who will be selling to them abroad will not be because these five people are Nigerian and the Nigerian people are, are suffering and that the Nigerian people need to buy at one price or the other. Let's sell to these Nigerian buyers at a cheaper or at a lower rate. Nobody will do that for them. It is the rate at which a man who comes from China, who comes from Hong Kong, who comes from Malaysia, go to the international uh, petroleum product market to buy. That the five, that the five uh, blocking and there will also buy. So if that is the case, the five people cannot cut the price. They cannot determine the price. At which, for example, the government and the Nigerian people would have preferred that they sell the products. They are businessmen who are out to make profit. They are also businessmen who are buying from an international market. And when you are buying from an international market, you are not talking about morality, you are not talking about ethics. You are talking about uh, recovering your money and also making profit. Very healthy profit for that matter. So it is wishful thinking for anybody to think that these five people can just sit down together and determine the price. If they just do that, what you are going to be having is never going to be comfortable, but a monopoly price, a price that can even be higher than what you presently have in the country today. Mm. In a country where we see that um, everything has a cabal, people who are selling, who are doing everything, there is a cabal here, there is a cabal there, cabal upon cabal, exactly. cabal upon cabal. Okay, well, mm. there, there, there still are, are some other um, headlines. Um, NLC, TUC, Lambast, Tinubu as fuel hits 630 naira per litre, shun negotiations. And what we have there is... Uh, the kick against the 8,000 naira palliative says Tinubu deviated from making Nigeria better. And NNPCL, which we have talked about anyway, defends new pump price, filling stations are short, queues resurface in Abuja and Lagos. So now NLC and TUC are crying that uh, he did not make Nigeria better as he promised. Now fuel is 630 naira per litre, and they have shown um, negotiations. Do you see another crisis brewing? <laughs> There's already a crisis in our hands. The prayer that we should be having now is that the crisis will not degenerate to the level in which it has presently degenerated in a place like Kenya. The Kenyan people are on the streets now, protesting the high cost of living, protesting high prices of goods and services in the country. And they are being led by a presidential uh, abstract. Not even the labor leader in those places. They are being led by Mr. Odinga Odinga, who contested with uh, Ruto. 
the last presidential election that took place in Kenya. How we are going to manage the crisis in our hands is what we should be looking at. And I think President Tinubu has come out with what he thinks will be a solution to the crisis we have in our hands. One of which is the 8,000 naira to each uh, indigent uh, household. I'm also told that he has ordered the release of grains to some farmers or to farmers all over the country and of course to the us that they will be coming up with some other palliative uh, measures. But would that not be like putting the cap before the hall? One would have thought that the regime of palliatives should have been put on ground for before you remove the subsidy. Mm -hmm. So if you have not removed the subsidy, if after you if it is after you have removed the subsidy, you are not talking about the palliative. What are the suffering that the Nigerian people have gone through since May 29th, up till now, that the regime of palliatives has not been put on ground? You won't want to agree with me that that is worse than putting the cart before, before the horse. Mm -hmm. And to the NUC and TUC, it would appear to me that those people have become totally irrelevant. And they became irrelevant the very day that they began to participate openly in politics, that they began to campaign for some political parties, and for some candidates in the last election, all over the world, most trade union bodies don't come out openly to start campaigning for politicians or to start supporting one candidate against the other. What they will usually do is to lend the tacit support to a particular political party or to a particular individual by adopting the programs of such political parties or such individuals that composing the election. But in a place like Britain, for example, you have the Labour Party, which is an arm of uh, the Labour people in Britain. But Nigeria is different from Britain, in the sense that uh, whatever support the labor leaders in this country give to any political party or to any individual can be easily misinterpreted, can be seen as a kind of uh, support for the enemy of the other political parties or for the enemies of the other politicians. And for that matter, MSC and TUC will most likely make themselves amenable for blackmail, tendentious and insignificant campaign of caliber with regard to whatever step they might be taking on these uh, subsidy uh, uh, issues. Well, the that... time may come for the Nigerian people to take the bulls by their own and fight for themselves with regard to these uh, subsidy issues. Well, this subsidy, we, uh, this, this we, uh, palliative, this palliative, uh, palliative is supposed to be a temporary measure, something to hold brief for, yeah. for a, a permanent solution. So far, I haven't really seen yeah. a permanent solution that would make the, the Nigerian populace to have a better life because everything in Nigeria is tied to this fuel and also tied to dollars. These are the two things that drive what kind of, whatever kind of life we live in Nigeria fuel availability, and then dollar, how much it is or how low it well, is selling well, in the market. Now, now they talked there. about fuel, uh, they talked about palliative and said 8,000 to 12 million Nigerians out of 200 million Nigerians. That's funny. But 8,000 naira. Now the president is saying he needs to review the palliative. And the review of this palliative or this 8,000 naira may be upwards, will mean that there will be more money. Uh, voted to do what they are going to do. 
And at the end of the day, you will find out that we may even hit a time where, or reach a time where the money for palliative will, would have been good enough, or just enough, just right, to even subsidize this field they are running away from. So why just take money from one place, call it another name, and say it is palliative? That will not get to everybody. Shouldn't, even we, shouldn't we be talking about revisiting the need or otherwise of removing this fuel subsidy, knowing fully well what, what Nigerians are facing because of this? Well, like uh, we have said before, when was the subsidy removed in the first place? <clears throat> there were two or three issues that were raised. First, that it was benefiting just the individual in the society. But is that really the case now? Yes, they may have been that taking the money, but resources. were the people not enjoying? From 195, please, now it is 617. And they say just a few people were benefiting. What were Nigerians doing if they were not benefiting as well? Why couldn't they have looked at why this money was <clears throat> overshooting? There, there was more money voted for the thing where we could have used less. Now that they know that we could have used less, why not just continue and shed... The other part, which made the money too humongous. Well, this interjection is that something my thoughts clear. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was saying, my understanding of the situation is this. And I have the question, why was the subsidy removed? It was removed because it was said to be benefiting the individual. And I said there was no doubt about that. The subsidy was also removed because the government thinks it will free some resources so to be able to address other developmental issues. Well, that may be true, but is it only in subsidy that the resources are being wasted? The answer is no. I have times without number mentioned issues such as the cost of governance in this country which is on the high side. And we have begun to see that, even with this new regime, we have told that the the National Assembly will get $70 billion dollar of error to search them in Abuja so as to be able to do their work, for which they are elected to do. Furthermore, you will remember that I have always said that the cost of contract in Nigeria is one of the highest, if not the highest in the world. So, if we are able to reduce the cost of governance, reduce the, the cost of executive contract in this country, and we scale down the global size of governance in this country, we might be able to free resources for developmental issues, and still be able to retain the subsidy of petroleum products. And if we extend the subsidy to some other areas, mm. because under President Muhammad Buhari, the 8,000, I mean, money were given, trade money and all manners of money were given to people. And that alleviated the suffering or the poverty that that money was meant to address. The answer is no. In fact, uh, Senator Sayusani, came out with a sarcastic tweet not too long ago that those who got Muhammadu Buhari's money became poorer after they got the money, the palliative. And they are admonishing the Nigerian people to reject the 8,000 naira that the Tinubu government is planning to give to indigenous people in the Nigerian society. So if that is the issue, or what the Usani is telling us is that this money that the government is planning to give to the poor people in the society is either here or there and will not solve the problem. We would rather throw that 500 billion into rehabilitating the refinery and then developing infrastructure, another environment program that will make it possible for the Nigerian people to live a comfortable life and then free resources. Mm. 
for government. Because look at the see uh, the, the the program they now plan for the farmer to so give seedling to the farmer from the silos or from what they've been keeping uh, for emergencies. People if you go, whatever you give to the farmers today, for all over Nigeria, do the farmers have access to their farm? The answer is no. In the north, the bandits will not allow the farmers to go to their respective farms. In southern Nigeria, kidnappers have shot out the farmers from their different farms. So, if you make fertilizers available, you make uh, seedlings available, if you also even give some money to the different farmers all over the country, chances are they will just use that money and whatever you give them, solve their immediate problem in terms of feeding, in terms of transportation, in terms of paying their children's and school fees. They will take the fertilizer to the market, they will take the children to the market and sell them and use it to address their immediate problem. The tragedy is that these programs of soil subsidy removal have not been well thought out. These, program, these programs of palliative have not been well thought out. The government will require to go to the drawing board and come up with a tighter program with regard to the subsidy and then the elevation of the subsidy of the Nigerian people. We are in very, very deep crisis. I pray that this does not lead to an upheaval all over the country. Based on what I saw yesterday, while I was committing on the legal. Well, uh, we do hope that it will not degenerate into something, into real chaos in Nigeria. Yeah, because so. it's only so much that people can take. And you made a very valid point. Why not use the $500 billion, uh, to... Uh, find a lasting solution in the uh, refineries. Make the refineries work so that everybody can gain. Because there are people who were born until their death. Yes, there are people who were born until they died. People who were born and until they died, they were enjoying the uh, fuel subsidy uh, in Nigeria. And now that you have removed fuel subsidy, and then you are giving palliative for eight or for six weeks or for six months, sorry and then you're expecting that person for a lifetime to go without it. I always give an example that people who are commuting, let's say from Ojodu Bega, that's the axis I come from, to the island every morning. And somebody will ask me, why not live on the island? Just come and try it. Then they, they used to pay regular vehicles, will, will take 300 naira to get to a co-hotel roundabout, for instance. Now it is 1,000 naira. The salary has not changed. And then you will say, okay, move from there, come and live on the island. On the island, you are going to look for just a, a self content as we call it in Nigeria, self con in Nigeria, and they're asking you to bring 1.2 million naira from that same salary that you are running away from uh, spending so much because at the end of the month, maybe you are going home with 5,000 naira or less. So what, what really... Are they thinking about someone said and I, I don't know it's an anonymous uh, quote and they said knowledge isn't free you have to pay attention is it that our leaders do not pay attention that they are not getting the knowledge to rule us well and find lasting solutions or they just choose to no. ignore no they, they are knowledgeable and for example mr president is a graduate in both economics and accounting, he has worked abroad with the top consultancy companies and then even with the petroleum uh, companies here in Nigeria. Hope you, he has also been a businessman. You cannot say that that kind of a person doesn't have a knowledge. So is it Look wickedness? Look at the party who is any president. He is a lawyer. He has been a governor. He's been a senator, he's been a minister. You will not say that kind of a person doesn't have money. Most of the people that we have in government today are highly, highly educated people and know that. I think the challenge we have always had 
is this uh, capitalism that we are practicing and the subscription to IMF and World Bank prescription, what they call neoliberal economics, which uh, will not solve our problem. Furthermore, the people in government are not ready to make sacrifices like they are calling us many Nigerian people to make. A few people, I think, one hundred and nine senators, and about three hundred and something out of real people, have now voted seventy billion alone for themselves for their own comfort, and they are asking the Nigerian people to take eight thousand naira for six months mm. for a problem or for suffering that will go on as the infinitum that will continue once you find solutions to produce petroleum products in Nigeria. So, they are adhering to World Bank prescription, IMF prescription, capitalism, and lack of uh, readiness to tighten their own belt and make sacrifices is at the bottom of the problem that the Nigerian government or the European government have and which most developing countries and Africa in particular are found themselves. They are not ready to seize the bull or take the bull by the horn because they think they might be hurting or they might be stepping on the toes of the Western world and they will not readily want to do that. Well, um, <laughs> we pray for Nigeria, we pray for ourselves, we pray we all survive yeah, this and yeah. uh, we cannot even we, we may not be, even be able to survive another NSAS, let alone a civil war in Nigeria. Our leaders should think of the people and know that there's only so much that people can take. The suffering is real, no matter how anybody sees it. Even the people who were supporting the government of the day are looking somehow. A lot of them are silent and all that. So if these people are educated enough, they should also have the wisdom uh, enough to do what the needful is. If people are suffering, suffer with them. But if you cannot suffer because you know a way out for yourself, also look for a way out for the other people because we live on this earth together. But this is how much we can go, Mr. Kolaole, on the program today. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of, of the press this morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. So we'll I go. wish you a lovely yeah. thank you weekend. Thank you very much. weekend. Good thank weekend, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need all the good wishes that we can have. We'll take a short break now, look at the weather a little bit, and when we return, we'll take our first hot topic. Stay with us.